Welcome to your practice on Monday. I'm so glad to be with you guys. You always lift my spirits just knowing that I have this time to connect to all of you, so thank you. Grab a spritz of something that you have that uh, is going to be nice and helping you really harmonize and get with the flow. So release, I'm going to use release or zen or um, I know the ones this month are sattva and gather. So if you like those, but really just anything that's going to help you just kind of feel a little bit more harmonious and peaceful. So go ahead and set your space. And then close your eyes and take a moment to um, tune inward. So maybe the palms go down if you need to minimize um, input, and minimize um, maybe stimulation. And maybe arms are up or if you feel really dull and heavy and need a little inspiration. Just take some deep breaths and really enter this time. So you have this hour of time that you've dedicated to be in your body, to move, to breathe, to practice all the things that we have to do the other 23 hours of the day. But this gets to be the one in which you get to really care for yourself and get to maybe not have to juggle so many other things at the same time. This gets to be your safe spot to work through how you practice these things. So the energy has been intense. We had a really intense full moon. And then the energy continues to be intense this week with some of the transits going on. But it's really not so much about bracing for the next transit or the next square or the next full moon, right? But how much we get skillful at really not waiting for things to happen and then responding. But I was thinking of like, the quote, and maybe I'm saying the quote backwards, but the best defense is a good offense. And like the more we can do what we can to set the tone of our day by how we move, by how we breathe, to make time in our day, to feel our bodies, to release tension, to get back in touch with ourselves, like that's our offense, right? That's how we kind of direct our own energy so that no matter what's going out and around us, we get to be, that inner resilience gets to be cultivated each time we come to our mats, our breath, our practice in whatever way we do. So I want today's focus to be about just like feeling that grace in which we just kind of like dancing when you dance with someone uh, that we have to kind of kind of get in sync at times and so at times we hold and at times we're moving and at times you're trying to find balance. So I want you to kind of think of that as we flow today that there'll be times we hold, times we flow, time, but just really trying to just kind of like harmonize, synchronize in with that so that you feel less resistant or out of tune or out of touch with yourself. But how do we kind of just continue to feel that grace to just ride our breath, to do what we have to do to be able to move in different ways and in different paces to intensity through relaxation. And that is the practice of yoga, right? So join your hands at your heart, rub your hands together. Bow towards your heart, right towards the intention in which you brought to your mat today. So whether it's what I'm intending for our class today or what you're going to work with, take a deep breath into your intention. Breathe it out. Nice. So we're going to work today a lot of side body opening, which means lateral chain, which is outer hips really getting into the side of the back and all that good stuff that can really help um, feel kind of more liberated and free and also just a little bit more flowy. I kind of feel like this is kind of like that tree or those um, branches moving in the wind, just being able to sway and find our grace. So we're going to work with that today. So we're going to go ahead and start right away by some movement. So go ahead and come onto your back. And go ahead and stretch your legs out, stretch your arms out, give yourself a big stretch from your fingers to your toes. And just kind of alternate like you're stretching, like you just woke up and you're just kind of bending one arm, straightening the other, lifting one hip, lowering the other, just kind of side, moving around. 
And you can stay on one side for a little extra. And then one big stretch all the way out and just relax. And then walk your feet over to the right. Keep your hips stable, but walk your feet all the way to the right and then hook your left foot over your right. And then grab onto your left wrist with your uh, right hand and stretch over to the right. So that left ankle kind of anchors the right so that we can anchor that side to stretch up and away. So as you're stretching to the right, kind of feel that left lung relax. Your left hip might lift a bit, it's totally fine, but just feel your body just kind of breathing through the whole lateral side seam. Breathing in, breathing out. One more deep breath, maybe there's sighs or bubbling of lips. And then let it go and then walk your feet over to the left. And then your right ankle will hook on top of your left and then take your right arm over to the left, left hand grabs it and it's a big side stretch over to your left. And then from here, you're just breathing, sighing, letting that whole right side get a little oxygenation. And then one more deep breath in and out. And then let it go. And then go ahead and bring your knees in. So this is similar to the, the windshield wipers we do, but now you're gonna add a little bit of kick forward. So I let my legs fling to the left and then fling to the right. So if you do this fast enough, there's a whole lot less kind of hip work you have to do, and it's more of a nice stretch. So just kind of fling and swing. Yep, just like that, you guys, perfect, yeah. And so the closer the toes go towards your nose, the uh, maybe a little bit deeper outer hip stretch you get. And I like to just kind of imagine I'm kind of flinging stress out of, out of my hips. So just kind of a, just kicking it off. And you can go fast or slow, let those shoulders widen. And then kick it over to the left and hold. So you can kind of hover the left leg, straighten and extend through the knee, feel that turn and twist to the left. You can rest your foot on the floor, like mine's just hovering and that feels good. Take an extra couple breaths. And then fling over into the left. And again, you can hold, you can rest on a block or the floor, twisting over to the right as we open the right chest. And coming back into center. So go ahead and place your feet flat on the mat. So I'm gonna give you the option to do this with feet flat or in Baddha Konasana if you'd like to get a little inner thigh work in. Go ahead and interlace your hands behind your head so you have a nice good clasp so that your head is relaxing into your hands. And for the first couple of breaths, just let your elbows open and open up in your chest. Just kind of feel those elbows stretch apart. Now letting the weight of the head open the chest further. We're going to do some side bends, elevating the scapula so we get a little side oblique work as well. So it's really important that we're going to use this to connect to our core, but also to connect to the breath to start energy moving from the core. So we're going to take a deep breath in. On the exhale, tone your belly button back, lift your elbows slightly up and uh, towards the sky, and then you're going to come to the right exhale. Inhale, center. Exhale, swing to the left. So I'm trying not to. You're going to keep going. Inhale, exhale. So I'm going to try to keep my shoulder blades lifted as if I'm kind of, uh, kind of rotating on the base of the scapula. I want to not use my head, and I want to not use my hips. So I'm going to keep my hips stable, although I'm shortening one side of the waist and lengthening the other. So if you need to take a break, you can come all the way down and then come back up. Exhale to one side, inhale to center. And as you're exhaling, you're pulling your navel back and slightly up as if you were kind of trying to button or zip your pants. So instead of pushing out and bracing, we're giving the low back some, some length. 
So you're synchronizing this with your breath, so you could be going slower or faster than I am. So keep it going. Keep your head relaxed, especially your jaw. So when we do this core work, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to exacerbate any tension so that the core strength gets tied to tension, but it's that we want that graceful strength, right? That keeps us breathing through intensity, not holding on or bearing down. So like kind of able to just kind of relax. Okay, we're gonna do four more. And then go ahead and open up the arms again. Place the soles of your feet together unless they've already been together. And just breathe and relax. Kind of feel this energy circulating around the navel. And then go ahead and place your feet flat again. So we're gonna do a little bit of shoulder opening. So palms are gonna face kind of towards your toes and we're gonna cross reaching your fingers towards the floor and then open and then cross the opposite arm on top. So kind of inhale and then exhale. And you're trying to reach your fingers as far away from each other as possible so that you get a little bit of um, rounding in the shoulder blades. So I'm kind of reaching and stretching, kind of stretching upper back, but feeling my spine elongate. So I feel my kind of body nice and grounded as I open. And now whatever side you have on top or right arm on top, whatever you have, kind of just let gravity work. So kind of just letting your arms hang. Breathe a few deep breaths, kind of really feeling if you can feel the breath into the back body. One more deep breath, maybe out through your mouth. And then open it up and switch. So if you have right arm on top, now left arm. And again, just hanging, letting gravity work. See if you can really direct the breath into the back of the body. So even if you can't feel it there, can you visualize that area in the back of the heart space, expanding, dilating, broadening? And then one more breath. Nice, slowly opening the arms out. <sighs> one more set of little core work exercises. We're gonna take the legs straight up to the sky so that we can feel the low back lengthen. So heels are gonna press. It's okay to have a little bit of bent, um, bent knees if you need to. And it's okay to have completely bent knees if that's just better for your low back. Now, as we lengthen that right leg down, let's twist up into the left. That's your exhale. On the inhale, bring the legs back up. On the exhale, and you can even bring that left leg slightly away from the midline, and then come back up. Exhale, up and away. And again, that left leg might move, so there's a little bit of a twist. And that's an inhale. Exhale. So you're pulling the navel down, trying not to pull it on the head. <sighs> drawing the navel down again moving with grace so that these are intense for sure but we're gracefully strengthening our core so there's no gripping or straining there's that confidence that exists that we are enough we don't have to strive or strain to do this work so we'll do four more we'll hold on the fourth one and really kind of feel that twist. So this is the fourth one, I believe. So you're gonna hold up, take another slight breath in. On the exhale, lift a little higher, squeeze a little more. And then lower it down, last time, last side. Exhale it out, and a little small inhale, and then exhale. And then bring the knees out, grab onto your ankles, roll the ankles. And then let the knees knock together, the feet go wide, hook your thumbs and reach your arms up and overhead. Big stretch here. So try to really let the side body elongate here. Let the heart space release back. 
Feel the knees and the fingertips stretching away as you stretch through the core. And then just kind of send that core energy of confidence, of strength that is graceful to any part of your body. It could be your mind, it could be your heart. You could just be really sensing and feeling it in your guts. Okay, slowly come up and we're gonna rock and roll ourselves up to a seat. So coming onto your hands and knees, we're gonna do a little side work here. So when you're ready, we're just gonna kind of wag our hips. So it's kind of like you're a happy dog wagging your tail, just kind of look towards each hip. And just kind of shaking it out. And then let's add it into our cat cow. So inhale, heart forward. Exhale, round upper back, and then swing hips to the left, swing hips to the right. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, feel your core. Swing hips to one side, doesn't matter which one. Swing hips to the other. Two more. And then all fours, inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths in your down dog, just kind of letting your heels settle in. You can bend the knees if your hamstrings feel tight today to allow the low back to get a little bit more length. So stretching out from the middle of your arch through the um, outer edge of your arch so you feel the dilation of your heels and the ball mounds of your feet. Now bend both knees and then straighten your right leg and turn the right toes out to the right. And then as you do that, can you lift the outer right hip away from your right palm and get a nice little stretch there. So right hip lifting, right toes turned out like a warrior one. Keep that left armpit kind of lifting, right armpit lifting, and that whole right side seam gets longer. And then turn it, so the right toes turn back in, you'll bend both knees, and then straighten your left leg, turn left toes out. And as you do that, lift that left outer hip away from your left palm. So maybe you're getting a big hip, hip stretch, could be a calf stretch. Nice deep breath in, and nice deep breath out. And then as you're ready, turn both toes forward, roll yourself into high plank pose, First time, drop to your knees, drop chest and hips at the same time as elbows wrap in. Untuck your toes, we'll do a rolling cobra, so the right shoulder lifts, then the left, and then we drop right shoulder, and then we drop left, and then left. And then come to the center one time, pull the hands back, lift the chest, press down through your feet, and then come back towards a child's pose. The right arm will reach to the left, and you'll kind of pull that right hip back. Now walk it forward, and then pull the left hand over to the right. Draw the left hip back. And then center your hands forward, rock back, child's pose. Come forward, tuck your toes under, and downward facing dog. Nice and slowly walk your feet to your hands so that you really get that feeling of heel to arch, kind of feeling the calves. We'll take a halfway lift, stretch your spine long. Forward fold, release down, shake your head out, kind of maybe roll or shake a bit, just let everything kind of. <sighs> and then bend your knees, roll up nice and slow, lengthening through your tailbone, head, neck, and shoulders last. And take a moment to be upright. So let your body kind of take in all that movement, standing up nice and tall. All right, we're gonna stretch the arms up. If you can find Vira Mudra, which is index fingers up, clasping your hands, great. Otherwise, grab a hold of one wrist if that's better for your shoulders, okay? So we're gonna stand. I have my feet shoulder width apart. I don't like feet together. Bring your four, uh, rib cage in and down so that there's no back bend, but a long uh, spine. Reach up and then take a side stretch to your right. Now, as you do that, use the right hand to lengthen that left side body. 
to kind of pull and lengthen it. Find your balance, and as you secure the left leg, float the right leg out. Stay for three. Stay for two. And then we're going to take the arms up. You might free them and then hinge forward, warrior three. We're going to do a little side stretch here. So I'm going to walk my hands to the left. And I can even grab that wrist if I want. Keep breathing and keep lengthening the heel away from the wrist. Take a deep breath. And from there, you're going to bend the left knee. And all I'm going to do is put my left hand down on the block and continue the same stretch. You just did it in warrior three, now you're doing it in a low lunge. So my left hand is outside my left foot. My chest rolls down, but my stretch comes from that right leg. All the way through my right hip. Okay, so we're gonna flow a little bit now. So I'm gonna turn and come towards the back of my mat, and now the left arm is over my head in a side angle. So you just kind of do a little turn there. Yeah. So take a moment, and if you need to let that arm kind of reset, you can drop it down and then lift it back up. Now, can you stretch from your left foot out through your left hand? As much as you can. Now you're going to tip up and back, straightening your right leg. And once again, Vera Mudra, stretch for that right side. Lift from your left side waist. Take one more really deep breath. And then you're gonna cartwheel the hands all the way down to the floor. And then from here, we're just gonna, before we add on, we'll come to plank. Take a really deep breath, and we're gonna come forward, drop to your knees if you need to, all the way down. Rolling cobra, lift your right shoulder, then your left. Then lift your left shoulder, then your right. Oh, and then one time in the center. And then as you're ready, release down. Press back, child's pose on one side. Come forward, child's pose on the second side. Come forward and then just downward facing dog. Even it out. Nice work. Staying with that left side, we're gonna lift that left leg up and then step it forward between our hands, drop to the right knee. Take your right arm up, bicep to ear, bend the elbow, and take a side stretch, stretching your tricep. So I'm kind of pulling my bicep towards my ear, and I'm pulling my right arm towards my left. Big side stretch here, deep breath in, deep breath out. Continue the side body twist and move it into a twist. So the hands are gonna to come to the outer thigh, you're welcome to tuck your back toes under and lift. Otherwise, you can look down or let your head go, but twist your body. Now let this twist be a good way to kind of detox and cleanse. So every time you exhale, twist a little deeper. Use that exhale to cleanse. And on the inhale, lift your heart. One more breath. All the way down to the floor. Step and fold forward top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Fold on forward, bend your knees, roll all the way up. Arms stretch up, exhale, hands to heart. So we're gonna do the second side and we're still going slow before we flow, just to kind of get an idea of what these shapes are. So find your Vira Mudra, or you're gonna grab a hold of your wrist. We're gonna stretch up, bring your front rib cage in and down so that we broaden the upper back. And we're gonna go over to the left. I'm gonna use my left hand to lengthen more into my right side body. So kind of pull and lift. And my head can fall on my bicep. Find your right heel and then lift your left leg away from your right. And then all you do is come back upright with your torso, swing your left leg back. I free my hands, that feels better to me. And then I'm gonna move my arms over to the right. So I get that same side, side stretch, and I can grab my wrist. So warrior three with the side bend, and one more breath, and then all we do is come down to the mat, and I'll grab a block, or I'll just place my hand on the floor, and it's a side stretch. It's the exact same thing we did in warrior three. So my torso faces down, my back heel is up, and I'm just reaching away 
from my back hip while I draw my right hip back and in. Now just listen, we're gonna go to face the opposite side of the mat for extended side angle. So I just go nice and slow, extended side angle. You got it. If you need to redo your shoulders, do that so you can feel a stretch from your right foot out through your right arm. Now we're going to tip up and back, straighten the left leg, and I'm going to find Vira Mudra again to stretch away from my front leg, but I'm lifting out of my lumbar. Big breath in, and then on the exhale, my hands come all the way down to the floor. Plank pose. Exhale all the way to your belly. Rolling cobra left side first. So left and then right. Right and then left. And into the center. And then press back child's pose to one side. Doesn't matter which side. Just walk your hands to one side. Come to the center, reset other side. And then reset downward facing dog. That right leg is going to step forward between your hands when you're ready. Drop to your left knee and then come up. Left bicep to ear, bend the knee. And then as you take that bicep to your ear, stretch over to the right, stretching your tricep as well as getting that side body. Then continue the side bend, but now turn it into a twist. So you can take a prayer twist or a flying arm twist. And then intentionalize a detox so that as you twist and pull your navel back, feel that ringing out of the spine. You can look down or let your head go. Okay, hands to the floor. Step and fold forward, top of your mat. Long spine. Fold on in, all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to the heart. So we're going to do that same thing we just did on each side, but now we're not going to hold it as long. We're just going to try and find some grace. Okay, so we'll kind of, I'll kind of walk you through it, but just know that if you need to go slower, you can. This is about, again, like finding your place within this, keeping in touch with your breath, and just kind of feeling these graceful movements. Like how do we feel graceful doing weird poses and intense things at times, right? So we're just going to practice it. We're going to do the best we can. So the arms come up, Vira Mudra. Inhale, exhale to the right. Inhale, exhale, lift the right leg. Inhale, and then exhale, we're going to come into Warrior Three. I'm going to separate my hands and stretch away. And then I'll just kind of exit down to that low lunge with the side stretch. Then we're going to dance between two shapes. You're going to go from this side stretch low lunge to extended side angle to reverse warrior or reverse triangle. Yeah, and then now come down to a low lunge on this back side. Okay, so you have a low lunge back side, left side side body. Now go side angle front of the mat. I'm staying low, reverse triangle, tip up and back. Side bend, left side forward. So we're just gonna keep going between those shapes, right to left, right to left. So I have a side bend on my right, and then I go side angle. And then I go reverse triangle. And then I go side bend, low lunge. And again, if you get lost, it doesn't really matter that you're doing the exact shape. Is that again, we're trying to feel graceful, even when we don't even know where we're going. Because I feel like that all the time. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening, but I still want to move gracefully. So we're just going to practice that. So side bend, left side, right side extended side angle. Reverse. Triangle, you can do any arms if these are confusing. Right side, low lunge, side bend. Side angle on the left. Reverse triangle. 
And this is our last time, low lunge, side bend on the left. Side angle to hold on the right. So if you got lost, find your way to join me, it's totally okay. And then reverse triangle. Nice, and then windmill your hands down to the mat, you're in a low lunge. You made it. <laughs> Step on back to plank pose. Breathe in and breathe out. Just take a moment in plank to catch your energy. Walk your feet over to the left a bit. You get a little side stretch. Walk your feet over to the right a bit. Get a side stretch. Come back to the center. Knees down if you need to, all the way to your belly. Start with your right side, rolling cobra. Start with your left, rolling cobra. And then pick one side, so maybe we'll do right side. We'll do right side, child's pose, hold. So really hold and feel your body walk to the right, so maybe you accentuate it since we're holding, pull the left hip back. Let your head drop. Then come back to the center. Go over to the left. And maybe you accentuate it. Maybe it's even more to the left than you would normally. Come back to the center. Downward facing dog. We'll take that left leg and we'll step it forward between our hands. Take your time, right knee down, arms up, right bicep to ear, bend the elbow, grab the right arm, and pull towards the left as you side bend. And then coming into that twist, so I'm going to straighten my right arm because that kind of feels good sometimes and lift my left. So I kind of can press against my thigh to open. Maybe you want to stay in a prayer twist. You got it. Okay, release your hands down. This is where we add on. So you're going to step your left leg over to the right. So it's not in front of you anymore. Your left leg is towards the right. So I can either just hinge back and I'll get an outer hip stretch. Or if that's not working for you, you can come to the outer edge of the left foot and bend the left knee. So I still get an outer hip stretch, but I just get a different one if my ankle is towards the right. So it's a really weird lunge. So I'm hip hinging, feeling the hamstring, the outer left hip. Flex your toes back. Now just listen for this next one because it is definitely a very weird pose and I'll show it to you two different ways. So by all means, just stay here if this is a better one. So you're going to allow yourself to roll to the outer edge of that left foot if you haven't already gotten there. So on the outer edge of my left foot, I'm going to step my left arm forward and I'm going to roll. I'm sorry, I'm going to start to roll onto my outer left hip. And then from here, I'm just gonna take a little side stretch. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna kind of roll to my hip. And I can keep this left knee bent or I can straighten it. It's just a little bit of a twist in a side stretch. So I'm on the outer left hip. I could stay kind of upright if that's better. And I could always just stay here if that was working. Okay, so if you're here, go ahead and plant your hands and come up and then step that left foot over to the left and then come into a figure four side plank. So left foot is splitting the distance between wrist and ankle and my left hip lifts. My left arm can go overhead if I want. Last little bit of stretch, maybe really press away from the floor. And then when you're ready, turn towards the front of your mat and then see if you can step forward. If you need to adjust to get there, it's okay. 
Just hang in that forward fold, take all this in. And then bend your knees, rolling up nice and slow. Roll those shoulders a bit, stand tall, take it in. So remember, all about the breath, staying with your breath, staying patient with yourself. It's not about doing the same thing that I'm doing necessarily or really being in the same pace, but moving again through those shapes, feeling as graceful as you can using your breath using your intention, using, being able to adjust your pace so that you're staying true to you, right? That's what we're trying to do. Just practice that in the mat so that we can practice it other places. So arms stretch out, inhale, lift. I'm finding Vira Mudra, you might grab a wrist. We'll stretch to the left. We'll take a deep breath, we'll anchor the right leg and we'll lift the left. And then we'll start to move into warrior three when we're ready and you might free your arms and stretch them over to the right. Go ahead and anchor it all the way down to that low lunge. Here we are in our old friend low lunge side stretch. So friends, remember all you're doing is going from front to this other side of the mat. And then so when you're ready, come into that side angle. And again, you get lost, just hold one of the shapes. You don't have to move up and down. We're reverse our warrior. I was showing you straight leg. You certainly can. And then we stay on that same side, and it's a little lunge. We're only going to do this three times. So if you're hating it, we're almost done. Side angle on the right. Reverse triangle. Straighten your front leg. Tip back. And it's low lunge. Right leg is your bent leg. Okay, and then we go side angle on the left. This reverse triangle, big stretch, and down to low lunge is where you'll pause. And then we're going to come into plank pose. Just stabilizing a moment or two in plank. And then when you're ready, all the way down to your belly, rolling cobra left side first. Like really take your time as a nice little spinal release. And then cobra pose, pull the heart, heart forward. And then exhale, press back. So this time have your knees together for child's pose if that's okay. Because we're gonna do a little twist in child's pose. So my knees are together rather than knees wide. So I'm going to walk my hands over to the right. Then I'm going to place my right palm by my right knee. I'm going to press up, twist, and then lay my head and my bicep. So it's a little bit of a twist. And you should get a nice little shoulder release if you can do that. So I started with my hands to the right. My right hand came to my right knee. I lifted up and twisted so that I can lay the left side of my face on my left bicep. And then from here, I'm reaching out of my left arm. I'm letting my head go. Let your head go and just really feel that stretch from that outer border of your left shoulder all the way out through that left side seam. And then slowly come up. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the left. So I'll show you on this other side. Hands go to the left. And then I move my left hand by my left knee. Lift up, twist, and then I lay my bicep. And so it's as big a twist as you want, but really let your head be heavy. And nice and slowly, come on up. Come to the center for a moment, just kind of ground and reset. <sighs> and then come forward, downward facing dog. Okay, that right leg, when you're ready, we'll step forward between your hands, left knee down. Take your arms up. 
Bend that left arm, bicep to ear, and then it's a side stretch, tricep stretch. When you're ready, move it into that twist. So I did open arm twist. Maybe that's what you want to do, or maybe you want to stay prayer twist. Important to bring the right hip back so that you can pull the heart space forward, and you'll get that extra hip stretch as well. I can look down and relax my neck. And then slowly coming out. And this is where I'm going to walk my right foot to the left, over to the left. And then I'm kind of doing like a half split pose. Now, if this doesn't work for your body, roll to the outer edge of your right foot and bend your knee a little bit. You can still have the leg, leg out. And then just feeling that stretch, and I might flex my toes back and fully extend the knee to get a little bit more sensation. So all we do to transition is roll to the outer edge of the foot and then put my hip down on the right. Just put it down. And then I can keep the knee bent or I can straighten it. This left leg can do whatever, and I just come forward. And I just come forward and maybe I stretch my hands out and maybe I just come down. It's really, um, it will depend on your own body what you feel. It's similar to what we did on our back. Remember when we were flinging the legs? This is the exact same thing, it's just that now we're on the opposite end of it. We flipped it. Take a couple more breaths. And then go ahead and replant your hands. So we're going to be transitioning to that side plank on the left. So how I'm going to get up is I'm going to press back and come out the way I came. Then from here, I'm just going to readjust and step my right leg over to the right, my left hand out, and then I'm going to lift into that side plank. So you can adjust to how far up towards your hand or how far down towards your foot your right uh, leg is. My right leg is bent and I'm pressing into my right foot, pressing into the outer edge of my left so I can lift my hips and I'll get that same stretch. Maybe arm over ear for three, for two, and then the hands come down, I might turn my toes forward, so I'm kind of in a lunge, and then I'll step forward. And just let my head go, and I'll stay in this forward fold for a moment. And then just bend the knees, roll up nice and slow. Letting those shoulders again roll and stretch. Little side bend in a tree pose. So I'm gonna you can find a wall space if you need a little extra help balancing. We'll start with our left leg. So feel free to stay in a lower tree if balance feels off today. But again, we're working with grace, so it's okay to kind of wobble in this shape. If you want to go ahead and pick your foot up, go ahead and pick your foot up. So we're going to put my, my right hand goes on my right thigh. So I've got kind of this contact. And I'm going to see that I can bring my thigh towards my foot a bit so that I don't press my foot away or my hip away. Left arm comes up, and that could be it, or a slight little stretch towards my right thigh. Just a slight one. It's like, can I ever so slightly keep lifting at the same time reach? Yeah, and just do your best to keep breathing. And then maybe there's just a little bit of movement there. So maybe there's like an up and over. Yeah, maybe it's just an up. It's just a little bit of movement so that you can practice your grace. And then last breath, you can take it all the way down. Hands to the heart for a moment. Breathe in, find both feet on the mat. Okay, right leg is your base. The left toes turn out. You can just feel this action in the hip or go ahead and bring it further up. Left hand touches the left knee or the thigh and I'm just kind of first finding ground. Right arm might reach up. Might just be a reach up and a lengthening from the side body. That works too. Or maybe a little reach. And then maybe it's some movement. You might challenge yourself with a little bit of movement. Just a little. Yeah. 
And then maybe one more big breath in. And all the way down, nice. Just a moment to breathe. Find both feet on the floor. <sighs> nice. Okay. So we're in vinyasa down. So we'll inhale, the arms come up. Exhale all the way down. Long spine. Exhale down. And then bring your shins to the mat. One time cow posture. One time cat posture. Neutralize your spine and then sink back child's pose. You can walk your hands forward if you want or even back towards your toes. Just feel that lower back stretch out. Okay. We'll slowly come onto our backs. And if you have a strap, grab that. That will be helpful. If you don't have a strap, a scarf works, or a belt, or even a kitchen towel usually can work. So this stretch will look like a twist. It's not really a twist, it's more of a lateral hip stretch. So think more about the last really weird lunge we did. It's more similar to that. So let's go ahead and lasso our left foot in the strap. Now, I, if you can straighten your right leg, do that. If your right hip feels like it pulls, place your right heel in a block. And that just kind of lifts the right hip a bit um, so there's no strain in the hip flexor. So go ahead and loop, uh, loop your lasso, uh, your strap right around the left heel. And then take the strap in the right hand and then take your thumb to your left hip pocket or your left hip crease and push that hip crease towards your right toes so that you kind of draw that hip of the left down and in so that your left side waist is longer. Okay, and you'll take your uh, left thigh maybe three, maybe four inches to the right. Now what's different about this in a twist is the back of your left hip never leaves the mat. So it's just a lateral stretch. So I'm kind of drawing my outer left hip away from my nose and towards my right toes. Meanwhile, extending the kneecap, flexing the toes. So you should get a mild or an intense lateral hip stretch. And the more you bring your toes up, the deeper it gets. The more you extend through the knee, the deeper it gets. So you can stay right here if this feels like enough. Or if you want to go towards the twist, you're more than welcome to continue twisting. Totally, you can do that. It's really up to what feels good in the moment. So sometimes that twist just feels extra good and you don't need any more lateral hip. We'll take about three more breaths on this side. And then bring that leg back in. Maybe just neutralize it for a moment. And then we'll take that right leg up place it in the strap, left foot comes down either to the block if your hip flexors feel extra tight today or on the floor. Strap will go on my left hand, I fully extend the kneecap, flex the toes back, my right thumb and my right hip crease, and I'm just drawing that right hip crease down towards my left toes and in towards my midline. And then I take that right leg over to the left, like maybe two, three inches. It depends on your own body, but not so much that my right left low back is left the mat. It stays on the mat. And I'm just breathing and just noticing and tracking the sensation. One more breath. And then take the leg to neutral for a moment. Just kind of feel that right at the midline. And then go ahead and take both feet in the strap for a moment. You can widen your feet a bit just to relax the low back. So I'm kind of going to press my feet into the strap and pull down with my hands. This just gives me a little hamstring stretch as well as a little back. Nice. 
Nice, and then go ahead and loosen the strap. You can take it away. So uh, I wanna give you plenty of, of time to, if you wanna do an inversion or a back bend, go ahead. You have like a few moments. We will end with some breath work, but I wanna give you a chance first just to kind of, um, if you wanna do an inversion or if you need another hip stretch or if you didn't get your back bends in, if you haven't done those, go ahead. It's kind of your time to kind of integrate the way you integrate. Some of us like to go upside down to integrate or open our hearts or just sometimes it's just resting and letting it all settle. So take your time getting into your last shapes. All right, so just let the breath, again, be that guide to tie you into the moment, to tie you into your body. So I'm going to guide you through a little bit of breath work if you'd like to do it. You don't have to do it. Um, of course, you could just go right into Shavasana, or you can stay in your inversion. But go ahead and roll into your right side. So you'll be on your right side. And you're going to use your hand to plug and unplug your right nostril. This is the balancing breath I talked about in my newsletter. But we're going to do it while laying on your side. So you're gonna be on your side, you can kind of use your hand on the right to plug and unplug your right. We're gonna breathe into the left, where the right side is plugged, out through the right. Breathe in through the left, out through the right. And then just keep going for a few rounds, just like that, breathing in through the left, out only through the right. Breathing in through the left, out through the right, in through the left, out through the right, in from the left, out from the right. And this is your last round, in through the left, out from the right. And then just lying on that side, just take a moment to notice how you feel. And then ever so slowly, you're gonna roll onto the other side. And you're gonna be breathing in through the right, out through the left. So you'll plug the left as you breathe in through your right, out through your left. In right, out left. And just keep going just like that. In right, out left. We're just balancing the hemispheres of the brain. We're balancing that more lunar channel with the more solar channel, the more creative with the more linear, the more receptive internal energy with the more outgoing energizing energy. Do one more round. And then just noticing that, so just keep breathing normally. And then roll onto your back when you're ready in Shavasana, so the arms can come out, the legs can stretch out. And just take a few breaths, so maybe a balancing breath. So maybe there's four counts in, breathing from the base of your spine to the crown of your head, and breathing out from the crown of your head down to the base of your spine. And just a couple breaths, even tempo, in and out. before you just rest. And after that third round, just let your breath be natural and easy. Soften your jaw, your face. Soften your eyes. Let yourself just take in a couple moments of spaciousness. So feel the space around you. Feel the space that you created in your body. Feel the space that your inhale fills. 
Feel the space that your exhale creates. Feel the peacefulness in the silence and in the stillness. Notice where in your body there's a peacefulness, where there's a stillness. Keep feeling for that spaciousness, the stillness, the peacefulness. Let your breath continue to cultivate these things. Let your awareness continue to find them without searching or seeking, just finding them by resting in awareness. Hopefully these are the moments that we remember why we practice and we remember to practice cultivating these things throughout our day, throughout our relationships, throughout our communications. We keep cultivating more space, more peace. We keep looking for where we are creating them. You know, if they're small pockets, we have a fine tune awareness to find it, uh, and we have that resolve to continue to do what we do to create it. So start to wiggle maybe your fingers and your toes if you wish to come upright. And if you wish to stay on your back and just continue relaxing, please know that's always the invitation. And as you slowly maybe come to a seat, <clears throat> We'll let the thumbs rest at the heart notch and we'll bow towards our efforts, our collective efforts, to find more grace in how we move with the energy, right? That we can feel like we are in some ways leading the dance by playing the offense, by doing those things that we know starts our day off right, that continues to keep us connected and peaceful. So we don't have to wait for a peaceful day to arrive. We are actively creating a peaceful day with our words, with our thoughts, with our breath, with the way that we move ourselves. That is our superpower. That is how we become unshakable, despite really ungraceful, shakable times. So breathing into that yogi superpowers that we're all cultivating breathing out let's chant at home together deep breath in beings be happy and free. May our words, our thoughts, and our actions contribute, create to that happiness and freedom of ourself and all other beings. And so it is. Namaste. Have a really awesome evening, you guys.